I'm going to introduce you to a brand new psychic I've never seen before. Absolutely brand spanking new. Still has the new medium smell and that cellophane all over. No, I'm only kidding. So this is going to be somebody named Cheryl Murphy. So what happened is in late September, 2023, I and some of my team members attended a gallery reading for Thomas John, had 114 people, I believe, in the reading. And I was there. They didn't know I was there, but I was there. And Thomas John got to an hour and then he said, okay, everybody, I got stuff to do. He says, I got to go to another Zoom thing. And then he, I'm going to quote him. He says, my thing that came up. Here's Cheryl. And he, she said, oh, nice to meet you, everybody. And bye, Thomas John. And boom, we're on to a new medium. It's a two-hour gallery event. And he's there for the first hour. And I guess some person's coming on for the next hour. And she is so completely different from Thomas John, which makes it an interesting contrast to watch. I recorded, I think, seven videos, seven videos, I think, of the first hour of gallery readings. Each person that Thomas John read, I made a video of it. And it's up on my channel. You can find it under the playlist for Thomas John. And so now I'm going to start with Teresa Murphy. I am going to start with the first one. Let's see if it's worth it to go on to the second one. Sometimes these things are really hard to watch. And so this is my second time. I queued this up right now. I blurred out the participant and I did not really watch this. The first time I watched it, I was like, what the heck's going on? I don't think I paid very good attention. We were trying, the team and I were trying to decide, is she hot reading or cold reading? And I kind of, I don't remember. I I mean, I, I think I remember, but she had so little impression on me that I don't remember what ends up happening. So you and I are going to watch this for the first time together because I've already forgotten. I've seen so many other um, psychic readings since this. It's only been... Uh, four weeks, three weeks. Today is the 17th of October, 2023. So you guys, this is an eight minute reading. You're here for me, right? Really appreciate you guys being here. I tell you, thanks guys. So I'm going to take some notes. I don't know if I'm going to interrupt her in the middle of the way, middle of it. So what we're looking for is is she hot reading like a Thomas John would be doing, getting very specific hits? Or is she cold reading? Or is it something else? Maybe she's really talking to the dead. The person she's picked on the screen is a woman whose name is Teresa. Her last name is very unusual. And if it had been Thomas John, I would have been like, okay, this woman's getting a hot reading. But in this case, I don't... Um, my team was able to pull up her Facebook profile in a few seconds. You tell me if you think she read it at all, if she's looked at her Facebook page or what. You ready? Okay, so I'd like to introduce you to Cheryl Murphy, somebody I'd never heard of until she popped up on my screen. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome to psychics explained i hope you enjoy your time here as much as we enjoy our time with you okay terrific uh let me ask let me just look at the chat box to start with here i read something about a daughter hi Teresa. struggling since my mom has passed i need closure but uh okay Teresa. well let's just see here i know we want to stay with psychic but let me just see what i can help you with Teresa, can you unmute yourself? Yes, hi. How hi. are you? Lovely. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so, um, thank you. Had, my mom had passed away in uh, June. Uh, I had found out that she had gotten cancer at the beginning of April, and I've been really struggling with that. Um, you know, not knowing if I did the right things, mm -hmm. you know, not, you know, helping her enough. And it was mm -hmm. really hard. 
I know. I'm so sorry, too. And I know everyone on the call is just sending their love out to you at this moment. And I do feel a lot of heart energy coming through. You know, I feel a lot of either unfinished business, if you understand that, or leaving things left unsaid. And I, I get a sense, Teresa, because I'm going to try to move with you psychically through this, but always know that please come back to Thomas for mediumship readings too. I mean, always, because the healing, you know, mourning and grief is, there's no time limit on it and it's different for all of us. And it's such a sacred time that we have to just honor and and try to trust that there is, um, there is healing happening also. Uh, but is there something about you moving please, or having to get rid of property? There's something about a real estate transaction, please, Teresa. Uh, well, I am a realtor. My husband is a builder. So um, he's building a house now that we're going to have to sell. And I hope that it sells quickly. Um, yeah. He is unfortunately not living with me at the time. We are together, but kind of separated. So definitely. And uh, look, uh, when I feel from your mom is she sends signs as angels or angel wings to let you know that she's around. And also that um, I don't know why I'm getting this sense of um, you feeling responsible or something around her passing or feeling like a guilt. I don't know. It feels like there's like I should have been there sooner or, you know, I should have gotten there. Well, she lived with me, but she was 97 and you know we held back from doing a lot of things because of her age and i just felt like you know should i have taken the step and had the surgery done mm -hmm. um you know it took so long before we could even get any sort of medication for her that she wasn't even able to start chemo mm -hmm. but because she was so old you know at, at 97 we were afraid to do all these things mm -hmm. And you know, she had one bound route, um, one uh, round of radiation, and that was it. She stopped eating, and that was it. Yeah, I feel that you have your mother's strength. Actually, is what I'm hearing. You know, in some way that she's letting me know that she's walking. Of course, that she's better, and that uh, it's always important to know that she's at peace. That's always the number one thing, Teresa, is to know that she's at peace and she's resting. And let's yeah. see, someone, if they could just mute themselves, I'm not sure who that is, but. Um, Are you able to um, see if she's with my dad or can you bring him forward or? Yeah, well, uh, because I'm trying to stay uh, psychically with this, just to see if she does come through, but really the focus is about the healing with you. I just uh -huh. feel you gathering all these papers and going through them. I did hear yeah. the name John or James, if you understand that, please, a J initial. John was my, my um, uncle and my grandfather. Yeah, because she says she's over there with a lot of people, you know, not yeah. just dad. And I just keep hearing animals running around. I don't know if I feel little bunny rabbits. I don't know if they're dogs or bunnies. It's like they're just hopping and jumping. Uh, so I'm not just so tuning in. I'm just feeling yeah, the I, had, I had a lot of dogs. Yeah. And uh, right. Yeah. I just feel the energy stream. It's like a wave coming in of animals. Right. So it's it's not probably just one, but she's over there. And I want to tell you that, um, you know, your mother is uh, very complete. I just feel very complete and at peace in her life. And it's not about blaming or holding anybody responsible. I want to say that she knows that she was in good hands when she left this world, if you understand that, please, mm -hmm. uh, and that she is with God, that feeling. So I do her feel her being spiritual or religious, if you can understand Very much that. so, yes. Uh, so just knowing that, and I really get the last thing I hear from her at the moment is just, if you want to, uh, write her a letter. And, you know, it's not about, um, it's about really about expressing yourself emotionally, uh, but it is about you communicating with her. And I want to tell you that um, I don't know why she gives me the signs of angels again and angel wings, but I really get a sense of that being a connection or a connecting sign for the two of you, please. You're very mm -hmm. much a heart to heart connection. And you know that uh, in, in some way she's still with you. And I just want to say, I feel like she's better than ever and that you smell her or you smell that fragrance or that scent around, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, her bedroom was right next to mine. Right? Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, she loves, uh, she loves, uh, you know, she always loved your hair is what she's talking about. Always loving the beauty of how you always presented yourself. And once again, she could not be any prouder. And I have to leave you to say this again, Teresa, you have her strength. That's what she's telling me. Like you, you're very, very strong. Okay. And uh, there's so much love coming to you. And I'm, I'm going to leave you with that, Teresa. Um, Thank I just you. know that there's something about you connecting with her through writing, you know, whether you're Thank writing you. just a letter in your journal, please know that And time has not passed on the other side. Like she's right here with you. And she says she can breathe again, you know, and I know you mentioned eating, but no, she's breathing and she's eating. She's thriving. I feel like she's playing checkers and here comes the board games and very social with your mom, if you understand that, or at least, you know, mm -hmm. loving, loving to have people around her. Mm hmm and Thank your mom's you so much. All, yeah, your mom is all heart and she's in a good place. And it's really about you getting rest or caring for yourself. And, and you'll see her again, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. you know, once again, I she's hope so. in good hands. <laughs> Someday. Truly. She's in good hands. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that uh, reading. I you know, appreciate what, it. What a joy. Thank you for, and what a pleasure to read you. Oh, dear Lord. That was just so much hooey. Who? Did you get the feeling like I did that the woman, Teresa, starts off very emotional? She wants to talk to her mom and how she feels this guilt and on and on. And then partway through that, after two or three minutes, you get the feeling that Teresa is kind of like, okay, this isn't quite what I was expecting. I mean, if she was with Thomas John, Thomas John would be getting people's names and so on because, you know, he's hot reading wow that was pretty bad let's go through it you guys leave me in the comments please what you saw because maybe it's different from what i saw but my impression is wow okay here's some of the notes i wrote the chat box all right so she's got the chat box open and and she reads out cheryl reads out that um she went to talk to Teresa because Teresa had written in the chat box that she was having problems dealing with her mom's death and that she was struggling. So the first thing Cheryl says, hi, Teresa, how you doing? <laughs> I would thought she just told you how she's doing. She isn't doing well. She's a mess. Thank you for asking Cheryl. Okay. So the sitter is struggling and she asks her again, so she gets a little further into it and she starts talking about how I feel like you're struggling. It's like, well, yeah, she said she was struggling before, like 30 seconds before. Why are we bringing that up again? And her mother, come. it comes out that her mother died in June of 2023. So this is in September. So just a few months before this reading. And she says, Cheryl says, are you moving or are you having to sell some property or something like that? Well, yeah, if you've got a person who's elderly, um, it's it's possible they have some property and now you're having to deal with that. You're moving her out, her stuff out, you're you're selling property. I, I think that's the odds of that are probably pretty high that she'd be moving. You know, she didn't mention that her that she's a real estate agent and that her husband is a const in construction. Um, Teresa, just like most sitters do in this emotional moment, they overshare. So Teresa brings up how her husband and her are not living together. He's, um, but they are still together, but they're not together right now. And he's, they're living apart and their mom is 96 and that she feels some guilt because she wasn't able to, um, because her mother at the age of 96 or 97 has cancer and she feels bad because they didn't have the surgery and didn't have the chemo. She's 97. Goodness gracious. No. Why would you want to put your mother through that? Why would you feel even an ounce of guilt about that? 97? That's that's pretty awesome. Gosh, I'd love to have my parents live to 97. Boy. That's, that's what a, what a blessing. If we're calling it a blessing, that was a blessing to have your mother there with you for so long. My goodness. Okay. So she's, so 
um, Cheryl starts talking about that there's angel wings and angels around. That's the sign she's getting. You know, that's typical of people having little angels on the walls or on the Christmas tree. Or I don't know. It's just a thing they say. It doesn't mean anything. It could have been cardinals or flowers or uh, coins or any kind of sign of the sort. And then she said something about her. Um, did you feel are you you're feeling guilty about not taking care of this sooner or not giving her the help or that you didn't get there in time? That kind of thing. I thought, what? You didn't get there in time? And then the and then Teresa says, Well, she lives with me. Her bedroom is right next to mine. So I don't know. She I think that's whenever Teresa started thinking. I'm not so sure this is going well. I don't think she's connecting all that well because that's kind of when you, her tears started to dry up and she started was like, okay. So I wouldn't be surprised if Teresa shows up somewhere and tells me, hey, I had this reading and boy, was that not so great. She she lived with her next door and then she starts talking, Cheryl starts talking about how her mom is strong and that that Teresa's just like her mom. She has her mom's strength, which means whatever. Well, she made it to 97, so I'm sure she must be must have been pretty strong. She's walking now. Oh, I'd be flying, man. I, I want to see flying if I'm in heaven. <laughs> Transporters beaming me from one place to the other. But no, she's walking now. Um, Something about what I why did I write this? Stay with the psychic with psychic healing. Oh, she was saying whenever, whenever Teresa says, "What about my dad? Is she over there with my dad?" And Cheryl says, "Well, I'm trying to stay with the psychic healing, the psychic bit. I'm trying to help you heal." Okay, more on that in a moment. But if she's trying to stay with the psychic stuff, why did she immediately go to mediumship and talk about her dead mother? I don't know. Okay, and then she pops in because she suggested, a, you know, is she over there with my dad? And she says, I'm getting a John, a James, a J name. Oh my God, that's, that's like some of the worst cold reading that there is. Oh man, that's like really bad. And um, so then Teresa pops up and says, oh, that was, I, I had an uncle and 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 my grandfather or something like that we don't know if that's on her mom's side or not but she pops up with those names and then Teresa's. i mean and then cheryl's kind of like oh that's great moving on i'm getting bunnies and animals and they're doing a lot of hopping <laughs> oh my gosh you guys this is really bad really really bad cold reading and then Teresa says well, I've had a lot of dogs. And so Cheryl doesn't mention any dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah, dogs. Very active. So write your mom a letter. Well, that's probably the best advice she probably could have given her is that to help her with her grief a little bit, possibly writing a letter and not mailing it. You burn it or you, or you, um, I don't know, do something with it, but you don't, well, there's nowhere to mail it to, but you could do that kind of thing. And then again with the angel wings. And then you smell her. And Teresa, like I said, I think she's kind of skeptical of this. She's She says, yeah, well, her bedroom was right next to mine. And she kind of dwindles off with her voice whenever she says that. Like, yeah, of course I smell my mom. There, It's only been a few months. And the and she was all over the house. And of course, her smell, her, her, her perfumes, her, 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 all of those things are still probably in the house and they still probably comes across it every so often. And you smell her. Well, yeah, her clothes are probably still there, that kind of thing. And mom loves Teresa's hair. And mom is over there, I guess, in heaven, playing checkers and other games and loves to have people around her. And she's doing great. So let's get this straight. Mom 
is 97 years old and has died. The Teresa's feeling guilt because she didn't give her mom surgery and chemotherapy at 97. So it's only been a few months and we all know grief is something else. I mean, it's there. She hasn't worked through it. I mean, it's always going to be there to some extent, but it's still very fresh. She's probably dealing with all the stuff you have to deal with when somebody dies, you know, all the paperwork and the, and to get rid of things. And, you know, uh, I mean, there's just so much involved after a death that you have writing letters, people sending you letters, telling you, you know, you have to let everybody know obituaries. I mean, there's a lot to do. So, so Teresa's probably a little stressed. I don't blame her you know, family photos and, and so on that are, you just have to deal with. But here's here's your mom. She's on the other side, which would be pretty awesome to, to she, she's, you've got contact with your mother. This is amazing. You're in contact with your mother and mom has this great message for you. And she says, I love your hair. Really? Cheryl, that's all you can do? If you are in heaven, I um, she's breathing and she's walking and she's playing checkers. That's it? That's the best you got? Sending you angel wings? Anyway, that was horrid. Just horrid. I, I, I don't know what you guys thought of that, but leave me leave me your comments. This was really bad. Unfortunately, this is like a lot of mediumship readings that I listen to that are cold reading. This is about the quality of it. I want to read one thing to you that I think I think this is really um, something I should probably mention more than once. So I posted a video up on my Facebook feed and one of my dear friends, Daniel Reed over in West Virginia, he left me this post and I want to read it to you because I think it's really important that we understand we understand this so let me read it to you it's only two paragraphs long Let's see if i can get it so i can read it no i guess not i have to pull it over here so daniel says having taught counseling and having been a therapist the purpose of therapist is to help people learn to cope such that they don't need the therapist again the purpose of therapy is not more therapy. Therapy is meant to help people deal with and process their emotions. Sure, the person may need a therapist again in the future, but the overall goal is to discharge the person and to promote emotional wellness. If a person believes that they need to rely on someone else to help them talk to a dead loved one, it does not engender independence, but rather dependence. To me, psychics or mediums are like drug dealers. Their clients become reliant on them. Sure, the person who visits them may feel better afterwards for a while after their visit, but so does the drug addict who gets a fix after visiting a dealer. The person may feel better, but to what end? They didn't learn to process emotions on their own or learn coping skills. Instead, their clients become dependent on the psychic or the medium for the next fix. As a former clinician i find the idea distasteful very interesting i think that's really well said daniel i will probably figure out where i'm going to put this in future articles and mention it in future videos and i've heard this from other people as well that that when when you see almost always it's women these women going back and forth to the same medium over and over and over again. And it's usually the same kind of issues. You know, they're feeling guilt. They can't seem to move on. I mean, of course you will never, you're going to remember that person. And of course you're going to feel that tug on your heart. And of course you miss them like crazy. But I guess because I've seen so many of these readings, you feel that 
you know the 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 crying and the and the guilt and the emotion and the and the pain and they just can't seem to they can't seem to get out of this cycle that they've got themselves into and like daniel says you need to find a way of getting past that guilt so that you can find a way of moving on with your life even though you know of course it's not going to be always the same, but you move through it and it might need therapy of some sort from a professional, a licensed grief counselor, a therapist of some sort, not these mediums who are making crap up. That's all Cheryl Murphy was doing there. She was just playing the odds. Oh yeah, your mom's sending you angel wings and why don't you write her a letter and hey she likes your hair so think about that it might feel good at the moment i mean teresa had a cry she got to cry she got to feel loved people heard her somebody's actually listening to her really intently and other people in the in the session are probably writing to her and and saying things to her it's cathartic right but it's not um it might like i say it might feel good right that moment but when you find yourself wanting to go back again and again and again to mediums then what you're doing is you're becoming dependent on the mediums so well said daniel they're much more eloquent than i could be so if you guys enjoy these videos, please let me know. Leave me comments. I've been getting some really, really nice comments in my YouTube um, comment thread. I had just the most sweet one just a few, a little bit ago from somebody whose name had a Jeff in it. I don't know what their name is. Um, very, very kind. And they were talking about how they, the love of their life um, died, I think, 18 months ago and they would really love to be in contact with that person, but it wouldn't be healthy for their, for for them to be, they could see that this would be unhealthy for them. And, and it, by not going to a medium, they feel like they're able to process their grief and get, get a move on with their life. So it's a very kind comment. I appreciate that. Um, Cheryl, what do you guys think? Leave me some comments. I'm curious about the next reading she does and see if it's kind of along the same lines of these tropes um, and so on. At least she's a lot more empathetic. I mean, she smiles and she's meeting your eyes and she's um, different, totally different from Thomas John. So I'm just a little curious about where we go from this. Subscribe, hit the bell hit like please hit the like button i mean come on you guys hit the like button it helps it helps the algorithm the youtube um algorithms that we that are so mysterious out there maybe it'll help me get some more views and more people can learn appreciate it i'll see you guys in the next video take good care of yourselves